I thought we'd take some time to go over a few things that we mentioned in class but, but didn't really get into that deeply. Here's the last version of the Hello World program that we look, looked at. And, and really quickly, you'll notice uh, I use make din, so that's going to expand into the linker command to build dynamic executable. I use dash lc, that includes the C standard libraries, so that I can use, for example, printf. And dash pi says try to make a position independent executable. Within the body here, I do the things we talked about in class. I use rel when I'm referencing uh, some object, and this is going to insert RIP relative addressing uh, in most cases. The assembler is still going to do, try to do the right thing. And then I call printf with respect to the PLT. So let's go through this really quickly to be sure you understand it. Remember, load effective address, LEA, is a unique instruction. When I see these square brackets, that usually means compute the address inside them and then go and get the contents at that address. So basically dereference a pointer. But that's not what we're doing here. We're computing an address and then putting that address in RDI in this case. We're doing the same thing for underscore start, putting that address in RSI, zeroing out uh, RAX by zeroing out EAX by exclusive oring it with itself. Be sure you understand that. So I XOR it with itself. And then because of the zero extend rule, the bottom 32 bits are set to zero and the top 32 bits are set to zero. So the entire RAX register is zeroed out. And then I call printf with respect to the program linkage table. What are the arguments? Well, the first argument has to be an RDI by the calling convention, and that is the format string right down here. Hedge redden, and then a uh, hexadecimal number. The second one is the address of the start of right up here. And that's going to be the second argument to it. So this is going to print out uh, the address underscore start, whatever that may be, and we won't know that until runtime. Then I zero out RDI by zeroing out EDI using the XOR trick. I put 60 in EAX, that is the number for the exit syscall. I do a syscall, and that terminates the program, and then I have a halt here just to indicate that that's the end. All right. One other thing I want to cover here. At no point here did I mention the stack. I don't need to. Now, why is that? Normally I have to worry about stuff coming in from who's calling me and stuff going back when I return. Not happening here. So nothing exists. The world is unformed. And then this process is called into being by the Linux kernel, which creates a memory map for it, builds it a stack, populates parts of memory with different things that it needs, and then jumps to this start location to begin this running after a context switch to user space. The stack is basically our stack. So we're the first thing ever called that uses this stack. Not 100% true technically because we're dynamically linked. We'll come back to that. But I, anyway, I don't have to care about who was using the stack before me or the registers or any of that. And I don't have to care about who will be using the stack after me because down here at the bottom, I terminate. Now, if I call the routine inside here like printf, I need to follow the calling convention for that. And it needs to follow the calling convention. But when I'm done, I just return, right? And then, so this exit system call says to the OS, remove this process from the scheduler. So no more instructions are gonna run and deallocate this process as memory. So the stack actually goes away. Now, if I were, if I had a main function here and now we're being called in the C runtime, the C runtime would be the thing that starts up and gets a brand new stack. And then it would set some stuff up and then call my main function using call. 
And when I was done, I would return back to the C runtime. And so as a result, I'm like a sub-program for the C runtime, and I have to take care of the stack and do all the other stuff that you need to do uh, to be a uh, good citizen in the AMD64 calling convention. So I hope that makes some sense. That can be a little confusing sometimes. So here's our program. Let's build it. And so it builds. And we can run it. And we can also run it again. And you'll notice that the next time we run it, these addresses are different. And that's because of something mentioned in class, address space layout randomization. The operating system is going to move stuff around. That's one reason why we need a position independent executable, because our code will work as it is without being modified as we move it around. All we have to do is modify what's in the global offset table, and then everything else should work. A quick check the file shows that, sure enough, it's dynamically linked. There's our old friend, the interpreter. Uh, life's good. Now, remember I mentioned CheckSec. You can install this with uh, with uh, sudo apt install. Let's run it and see what the security of this little thing we just built looks like. Wow, a lot of red and a little bit of yellow. So this first one we'll talk mostly about, so I'll skip it for right now. No stack canary. A stack canary is basically a random value placed on the stack, usually right after you push your frame pointer, the RBP. And later on, if someone's messed with the stack, they will corrupt that value, and that allows you to detect things like stack smashing attacks. So, that's good, but that requires some machinery actually be built into your code. We don't want to take the time to do that. You can make GCC do that. There's a switch you can add that will cause it to add stack canaries if you're so inclined. The next thing, in X, this is the no execute flag. It's disabled. And what this means is our stack is executable. Now, we don't want that, right? Having your stack be executable is a weakness for a number of reasons. How do we deal with the stack being executable? So recall our line where we built it. And we had this little link line right here. Let's borrow this link line. And let's add something to it. Dash Z, no exact stack. And we check security again. And now it's green. So now you can't execute out of the stack. Great. Program. Oh, sorry, position independent executable, green, it likes that. It likes it because this means it can be moved around. Uh, that enables address space layout randomization, which is, after all, a security feature. R path and run path, I'll let you just look those up. They are not that important. And you notice that we, we've, we've satisfied them. Symbols. This is red. We have 25 symbols in our program. And there they are. Uh, so you can see uh, here's our program name, the start.format, global offset table, start, so, so on. So why is this in red? Well, these symbols could give information to an attacker. They don't have to work as hard. They can look in your program. They can get essentially not quite to the level of debugging information, but they can get some information that helps them navigate your program. That can be fixed by stripping the executable. So now, look at that. All I've got is this one thing right here, and that's actually just for a relocation. Now when I run CheckSec on it, Look at that. Green. No symbols. That's great. 
So again, try to give as little information to potential attackers as you can. Have you been through Fortify? No. Uh, I'm not going to about that either. So let's go back over here to this rel row, and it says partial rel row. Go back up to our link line. There it is. And let's go ahead and add one more thing to it, dash Z, rel row. Now, this is actually the default. So if I go back now and do check sec, you'll see it's still partial rel row because partial is the default. What if I want no railroad. Well, that's just that. And now when I check it, it's red. It doesn't like that at all. I think you really should have relocation read only. And finally, if I want full relocation read only, I have to say now. I go through that, I check it, look at that, and now it's green. And I can strip it to get rid of the symbols, etc. All right. So no railroad, partial railroad, full railroad. What is this thing we keep talking about? Well, remember the global offset table holds the full addresses of a bunch of important stuff. Routines you want to call, uh, maybe data objects, etc. If I can find a weakness in your program that allows me to overwrite something in the global offset table, then I can trick you into executing the code that I want you to execute there. And I may have a, a, uh, uh, an exploit against your program. So that would be bad. So the idea here is that we will make the global offset table read only. Now, Clearly, you have to fill values in at runtime, which means that the dynamic linker has to load your program, see that it's marked for relocation read only, and then fill in all the slots in the global offset table with the dynamic relocations, and then change the security properties of that page to make it read only. And after that, it transfers control to your program. There you go. So that's one way of doing it. Another way would be to not do that. So what I just described, it would be eager binding. We do all the bindings up front. Another way to do it is lazy binding. In other words, I don't figure out where something is until and unless it's needed. That's a common tactic in computer science. So in that case, if I want to do it that way, then the got has to stay writable the whole time because I'm going to call something, it's got to figure out where it is, then it'll populate it. The next time I call it, it'll be direct. So what I could do is, I have two choices right now as it stands. The got can be writable. That allows me to do lazy binding, but it's a security risk. Or the got can be read only, which means I have to do eager binding up front, but it's less of a security risk. Well, what if I want to try to do both? Well, that is partial rel row, and I don't know why it exists exactly, but here's what it does. We divide the got into essentially two tables. One is the standard got. The other is the got entries that relate to the program linkage table. So you'll have got and then got plt. And it's common to have uh, both of them show up sometimes in programs. Sometimes you just have one, sometimes you have both. And you'll know because you'll have those sections. So let's take a look at the sections in our uh, little file. And we see that we have uh, a bunch of the normal sections we've come to expect. In addition, we have this plt, and we have dot got down here. And remember, we are at full rel row. So I can just mark the whole thing as not writable. Right now it's marked as writable, but then after, it, after we load it into memory and the dynamic linker resolves all those 
relocations, it'll get marked as not writable. Let's say I just wanted partial rel row. The only thing that's really in the uh, in the got are is the address of print apps. Let's see what it makes of this. So now we have partial rel row, and let's look at the let's look at the sections, and we'll see that it's pretty much the same except now we have this got dot plt, right? And that one will stay writable the entire time. And if we had other stuff in here, we might have a, a got as well. And sometimes you'll see this different, for reasons I don't understand, you'll see dot plt dot got. That's fine. It's, it's same kind of thing, right? It's just a place to, to put this information. All right. If we were to look at a system executable like ls, we'll see that it's got a dot got right here and it's got a plt and it's got a plt dot got and it's got a few other things that we won't go into so you'll see that we've divided the got into a plt got and a got and that makes sense uh, they've done that because they have both stuff that's related to the plt and stuff related to got but in addition they didn't necessarily have to do that because the, the stuff shipped with your Linux distribution has full railroad turned on and it's got stack canaries, you can't execute the stack, all this stuff has is, is been, uh, been locked down. Alright, so why don't we take a look at how things work both with full railroad and with partial. And let's start out by looking at how they work with full railroad because it's going to be simpler. So we'll go back up here and we'll put the dash Z now on here and now we have it built with full railroad. And we'll hop into GDB. And we'll get it started. Well, we're not actually in our program at all. We are inside this guy. We're in the dynamic linker. So it's going to do a lot of stuff and then start our program. We don't care about that. Let's go ahead and say uh, break at uh, start. There we go. Break at start and let's go ahead and continue. And now we're at start. And you see the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put uh, the format string in RDI. And let's see if that worked. So let's go ahead and uh, see what's in RDI. So this will just print out the contents of it. Uh, there is it as a string and there it is. It's our little hedge red uh, with that little hex code. So let's go ahead and do the next thing. And the idea was to set RSI equal to start and let's see if that worked. And it did in fact work, right? We can verify that those two addresses are the same. And you'll notice what we did here. And because you know about two's complement arithmetic, you'll know that, that that looks like a big negative number. The highest bit is set. So this is actually subtracting a few uh, 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 bytes from this location and pointing it here. And remember, we take this number and we add it to this one down here to get the uh, the target of this, which happens to be start. So we zero out REX. So if you see REX up there, it's currently holding the value 28. We do an NI, and now it's holding the value 0. There we go. And now we're going to call printf through the PLT. So let's go ahead and step into that call and that takes us here to this jump and you can see it's an RIP relative jump and it's pointing uh, at this address plus this offset and GDB has figured it out for us and says it's pointing right here so let's go ahead and take that that jump so we'll step and we find ourselves at, at printf 
because again we were pointing to a location we got the contents of that location and that pointed to the printf uh, code and that's where we are and so we can then finish up this call and it prints something out as you can see here it prints out Hesverden, and then that's the address to start we'll do a control L to clean up the screen and you see that we are right back after the call and we're going to zero out EDI so EDI gets set to zero or sorry RDI gets set to zero and then we put 60 in RAX and then we do a syscall and that's going to halt the program so let's do that there you go and why can't we access the memory at that address it's because the operating system has cleaned it up and done away with it it's not, there's not a process for us to attach to anymore rebuild with partial railroad now remember this is going to try to resolve these things at runtime and now we'll see what that looks like so we'll go ahead and hop back in the debugger set up the layout we want and we can do a start i but we already know what happens so let's just do break at underscore start and then we'll just run it and sure enough here we are uh, at underscore start and we load the format string we load the ad address we zero out rax and, and remember to the common convention first argument in rdi second in rsi and then for printf the number of floating point arguments that you're passing to it which in this case is zero and then you call it and so let's go ahead and step into that call and it takes us the same place it did before to this jump and let's go see what's at that location so we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll uh, print in hex the giant value because gdb is strange uh, at that location and we'll see that it points here to 5016 and that's the very next thing that's different from before so let's go ahead and take that jump and sure enough we wind up here okay fine we do a push and then a jump and we wind up here and we do another push and another jump and now we're at this location right here where are we now we're back inside the dynamic loader we've gone all the way around back inside the dynamic loader so I'm gonna skip through uh, I don't want to go through the gory details of how this works I'm just going to uh, walk through this pretty quick. I'm going to skip over this call, which actually does most of the work. And uh, you'll see that it comes back and RAX is this value when it returns. That's what turns back in that call. That, that value is going to be important, EE10. So we put that in here. We do some more stuff. And then we're going to do this jump to the contents of R11. And R11 holds that EE10 value. And this BND in front of it, that just means that's a branch protection. So that means when I do this jump, I expect the target of that jump to be one of these instructions. Uh, and so let's go ahead and do that jump. And now we're in printf. And so you see what happened is the first time through, we called back into the dynamic linker to go and resolve that. And now we're here. So because we can, let's go ahead and finish and control L to fix that and we're right here and so we would normally be exiting but we're in a debugger so let's go ahead and just say set RIP equal to start <laughs> how about that and let's just go through this process again so we'll load the format string we will load the address and now we'll zero out EAX and then we'll do the call so We'll step into the call, and again, we arrive at the same place we arrived every time, but let's check what's in this location this time. And we see it's this, right? And remember EE10, 
That was the address of printf. Right, so that's the that's printf. And so now when I do my step, instead of finding myself at those pushes and so on, I find myself here ready to do printf. If you want to know the gory details of why there are those pushes and, and the jumps, uh, you're welcome to go and look through that. I think you can figure it out. But that's basically it.